Greetings. Welcome to another On the Workbench with Niels Trains. In this episode, we're covering anything which we've visited the workbench, aka my computer desk, between late October and early November 2022, including this lovely Burlington Northern tank car you can see right here. Shall we get started? I think so. There hasn't been many new purchases this time around, so there's a lot more focus on fixing things, and maybe, if you're good, the possibility of showing you my inventory sheets and the processes I go through with them. Firstly, or more officially, that's last in my list of items I have worked on in this period, is this Burlington Northern 50-foot tank car. I found there were several bits fallen off, such as the left side of the platform, all bar one of her steps, and one detached coupler box, which of as this picture has yet to be attached. All of the detached steps are missing, unfortunately. However, I have fixed the platform so far. This will need its coupler box reattached before it can enter service. Remember this phrase for later, inoperable repair. Moving on. Until recently, this wasn't working properly. However, the phrase for what has been done here is called operational repair. We'll have a list going in no time. This item came to be brand new from Rapido Trains. For the benefit of those that didn't recognize the sound nor the car itself, this is a steam generator car. It was working when I originally received it, but one random incident led to the board's demise, or at least a component's demise. You should be able to make out the component labeled U3 on the top board and how it looks very differently compared to the other lower board. Rapido very kindly sent me this for a self-install, and it is worth mentioning the component on the original board does look like it was damaged or overheated in some way. I will also add, one of the power pickups here had disconnected from the frame. It isn't clear why this component died, and if the loose pickup had anything to do with it, but the turnaround for support was impressive. So, after finally contacting support after sitting on it for several months, and getting the replacement board very quickly, I took the time to not only replace the board, but also make some tweaks to the design itself. First, power routing from the trucks. Rapido has done something something like Walther's when it came to power routing. I allow the screws against the mantle strip to sign. Here you can see our two tabs sticking up, which touch two thin brass strips. This solution doesn't seem very practical to me. Plus, I have my suspicions from Walther's solution, where the power screws can bind up against the body and cause derailments. To be fair on Rapido though, the floor of the frame has crescent shaped holes which the tabs swing side to side, giving the trucks a level turning circle. Nevertheless, I believed hard wiring would serve it better. But there was a snack. The strips are very thick, so they needed a high temperature to solder the wires on. I was not going to risk melting anything, so I opted for the tightly looped and soldered wire method. After that, it was just a case of soldering the wires onto the replacement board um, and I needed to desolder a capacitor connection and since I was feeling lazy, the LED connections. Fitting the board and resoldering the wiring was simple. What wasn't simple was getting the shell back on. It turns out the orientation of the frame and the struts holding the board mattered. I am 99% sure it was orientated the wrong way from the factory. Consequently, when I attempted to reapply the shell, it wouldn't completely close. And if I did it the other way around, the volume control would have been inaccessible. I just wasn't aware enough to realize I could reorientate the board struts. I instead cut the tabs from one side of the floor. Luckily, the shell went back on with a click and it was fine. And there you have it, one operational repair. What is an operational repair, you ask? Well, let's take a temporary dive into the inventory sheets. This is one of several of my reference tables. 
I use this as a lookup for my servicing sheet. Right at the top, service repair PK number one is our entry for operational repair. It says, stock runs, but one or more features are broken inoperable. And what do I mean when I say stock runs? A very good question. It is probably best answered with the inoperable repair description right at the bottom. This one says, fixing stock which cannot be run due to a broken inoperable part. It's not so good continuity there between the types of descriptions, but it has the same kind of message. So what I'm saying here is stock cannot be run due to a broken or inoperable part. My intentions with this was the basics, trucks, wheels, and couplers. Essentially, if it can be run on track and connect and disconnect to a train, it needs an operational repair, irrespective of what else is wrong with it. The exception, of course, is for locomotives. Obviously, if a locomotive doesn't run, it is inoperable. Therefore, the tanker from earlier is inoperable because it's missing a coupler box. This segues us very nicely into the next piece of equipment up for repair, where both coupler boxes have fallen off. This 57 foot mechanical reefer's story began life with Neil's trains inside a box awaiting attention for several years. At some point, or during transit, undue stresses caused the plastic holding the boxes to break. This is likely an athen item, judging by the metal tabs holding the coupler box closed originally. The solution for our friend here was to drill and tap new holes for screws to be fitted. These served as additional support for the metal tabs, as well as elevating the reefer back into operational state. One casual mention is needed here in terms of the process for servicing and checks. This happens either after a repair or for a newly required piece of equipment. However, I anticipate at some point I am going to start doing this as a maintenance task. This process will consist of adding graphite to the coupler boxes if the couplers are sticky, oiling wheel wells and truck bearings, again if they're sticky, and finally, leveling the couplers against KD's height cage every time. Going back to the subject of Athens metal tabs locking couplers in place, I had two incidents of these escaping, taking couplers with them. I imagine these tabs are not designed for the highest stresses of longer trains, so it makes sense to ratify the problem as, as soon as I encounter it. My first casualty was a Boston and Maine four bay open hopper. And my second was a Norfolk and Western 50 foot box car. You may recognize these from the latest Essex Belt Adventures video. Link showing now if you're lucky. If you spot them and, they and then find they are no longer attached to the train, then the incidents themselves happen during those sessions. Moving on now to something more positive. An upgrade for a simple operating end of train device. I may appreciate the device is sitting in probably not the most prototypical location on the car, but I haven't got quite brave enough yet to fit one to the coupler. I may use an early knockoff plastic sprung coupler to sacrifice in future, but for now I think this one will suit me well. This is a DCC Concepts end of train device, and it did come with all the necessary components to install, save or stay alive, or capacitor. It also came with some axle pickup springs shown here, but those included were too small for HO, so I ordered the next size up. I added a spring on every wheel set, a pair of pickups for both tracks on each truck. This is possibly overkill, but again, I'm a bit finical for that. The springs were soldered to some wire at the end, and the long end of the spring was used to hold against the truck so it could pick up power somewhere and it wouldn't touch the other wheel and cause a short. The base of the frame was then drilled to allow holes for the wires to be passed through, and they were soldered together on the other side. It was hard to break my easy maintenance removal rule here, but because of the setup, it was inevitable anyway. I forgot to take pictures of the internals for you, but here is the magnetic switch which I glued to the underbody and just to the side. Theory is, I can attach a magnet to a pole and use it to activate the device, as I did in the video. Overall, I'm very happy with how I want this one turned out. I use this as a proving method for something more daring soon. The car itself was featured in the Lasix Exabelt Adventures video. Again, feel free to check it out later. That concludes our repairs section for this period. But that is not all. There were some purchases, after all. Both from Bressingham, and in no order of preference, starting up is this ATSF 50 foot plug, plug door box car by Backman. 
once they have proper couplers, these kinds of cards are pretty reliable for me. So it was it made sense. And secondly, an Athen Blue Box Santa Fe Coupler Caboose. I will always consider a blue box, especially if it is one of my lines and is in condition like this. That's it for this episode of On the Workbench. Like I said, I hope to have something special for next time. But I hope you enjoyed this basic view of the inventory sheets and just a general information on what I do when I'm not at clubs or working on the modules. Until then, keep railroading. <laughs>